Wow. Uh, anybody go to church? No, I'm kidding, you haven't. <laughs> well, if you didn't get a good dose of uh, sermonizing, you came to the right place. <laughs> uh, has anybody heard of the Kobzar? Raise your hand. Oh, many people. Okay. Uh, the Kobzars were sermonizers. Sorry to break the news. You don't like church? I don't particularly like a lot of churches either. <laughs> Starting with the Moscow Patriarchate. Did anybody hear that? Because it's not a church. You look, you go to find God. And who do you find? But the angry Antichrist. This is the Tsar, right? Uh, so be very careful uh, when you try to find God. That you certainly uh, find good folks uh, who have something uh, real to say. And that did not come for your money. It came for your soul. <laughs> Isn't that scary? I'm sorry, it's my profession, it's what I do. We call it the Kobzar tradition. I am not a Kobzar, but I'm on, uh, on the path, you might say. Uh, the Kobzars were blind. I have eyes. Who knows my English mother? Do you know my English? Three good days, okay. So we'll do lots of Ukrainian singing. La vas duja bahat ukrainsky text. I bilsi sne budu znati. Is there anybody not of Ukrainian origin? Raise your hand, just to give an idea. Oh, okay, half and up Okay, maybe maybe 30%. Uh, that's good. Uh, this program is not for uh, just Ukrainians. Uh, it's specifically for Americans uh, and Ukrainians uh, to uh, talk a little bit about how to end the war. That's why we're here, right? Uh, and again, I'm not talking money. I'm not even necessarily talking guns. That's kind of a side part of the project. Uh, I'm talking uh, through faith, how to put an end to this evil uh, empire. Uh, again, it's what I do, it's my profession. Uh, so, <clears throat> you can see I was a little bit late today, right? No, I wasn't, we started on time, almost. Uh, that's what I do, <laughs> I make it on time, even if it means almost dying. And I'm very happy to say that I made it alive. <laughs> Because Texans drive like nuts. <laughs> and I'm learning, right? I'm not quite there. Uh, but I lived through the process. Uh, and thank everybody for it. Uh, if you can see my hands trembling, there's a good reason. Uh, but of course, I've been ris risking my life for the past year. Uh, for maybe the past six years, when I've been going city to city with daily concerts, you might say, this is nuts. And I will tell you that I never promised that I was the same person. Right? It's not on the program, uh, so I won't be uh, fooling you uh, if I said that today. Uh, I've had a lot of experiences uh, which have trained me to be able to do this, uh, like on the freeway. <laughs> uh, and it's a pleasure to meet the Dallas community. This is my first time in Dallas. In Duja Pramla Oksana, as a postgraduate uh, we're gonna memorize my potim share for the first time. Okay, oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, so, uh, you can see the three musical instruments, so you can probably learn the first one. Excuse me if I switch into Ukrainian. When I see lots of Ukrainians, I automatically do that, uh, but I will try to speak English. We have three very unique instruments, not just which America doesn't know, uh, that the world doesn't know, that even Ukrainians today don't know. Who's heard of the Ukrainian Torban? Raise your hand. One, two, three, four. Okay, uh, we've all seen it, it's on the poster. Uh, but uh, other national instruments, why don't we Ukrainians know these instruments? Are we stupid? No, we're very bright. But when you're working with a very evil empire uh, that's very diabolical, you might even forget your own national instruments. Can you imagine in the state of Texas, not knowing who Elvis was, or the guitar the instrument he plays, you could even say, is that a balalaika? Is that a baklava? And somebody's saying, no, that's a guitar. Wouldn't that be a good thing for Texas to get to know had they forgotten, had you forgotten, right? Where, where's the cowboy? Uh, oh, okay. Can you imagine? But that's all right, mama. We're working on it. Okay, I can do Elvis. Maybe. Oh, well, that's all right, mama, any way you want to do. But that's all right. That's all right, now, mama, any way you do. I'm leaving town today, babe. I'm leaving town for sure. I'm going to be hanging around here no more because I've got to go to Raleigh. 
tomorrow night. In two days, you might say it's crazy, but that's all right. concert, but it's not just a concert. That's what we call Kobzarovania. Uh, there's lots of other information I can't say through music, I have to tell you. Uh, and uh, important that they went place to place, right? Uh, this morning I was in San Antonio, uh, yesterday I was in Houston, and the day before Austin, right? Uh, that's a lot of movement. As Robert Plant would say, dino movement, right? On another level, <laughs> I don't think Led Zeppelin had what I had in the <laughs> today. <laughs> you know, they're out in the back, you know, uh, having a smoke, probably. <laughs> Bless their hearts. So, uh, they would travel. Uh, they were missionaries. If you have a person under Muscovite occupied eastern Ukraine, and the, the Kobzors was from the east, these are eastern Ukrainian traditional instruments. Uh, the West didn't have traditional banduras. Uh, these are uh, missionaries, right? Telling the truth, keeping Ukraine Ukrainian, keeping Ukraine good, right? Spiritually good. Uh, now, you could say, this is very dangerous. Can you imagine uh, a missionary? Uh, imagine me going to the 20% in Don Donbass, which is under occupation. What might happen to me? And now imagine that I'm blind, and I can't see where the Muscovites are hiding in the bushes. Uh, and imagine they existed for 250, 233 years. Between 1700 to 1933, the Kobzars in, in Moscow-occupied eastern Ukraine. 
uh, to hide from the Muscovites, they created their own language. Anybody know what the Kobzar language was called? Libiski Mova. Can you imagine a musician or a group of musicians creating a language uh, to, to hide from the Soviets to where they were, the Russians? Uh, and to become a Kobzar, you had to learn a language. And you were blind. <laughs> and you had to go around and, and tell the truth. Uh, so this is very serious, uh, folks, uh, and very serious songs. Some people don't like minor tonalities. About the whole event will be minor tonality. Maybe at the end I'll do a very nice uh, Pikarniski Tetsi, as we say, the, the, have something in a major tonality maybe. Uh, but uh, what am I singing about? This is old Ukrainian, right, uh, from, the, from the Poltava region probably. Uh, if you don't know what I'm singing about, it might get very boring, right? Uh, because folk music repeats over and over. So I will tell you exactly what I'm playing. All the songs you'll hear today are, is music of defense. It's a muzka zakis Ukraina. And how, you might say, is this you know, a very simple folk song? How could this be the key to ending the uh, Russian Empire and putting an end to the war? I'll tell you. We have a brother and a sister. Is there a brother and a sister here today? Brat sestra, yeah? Three bratia? Okay, us. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, these two children, yes. They're not our children. Uh, imagine if you're from the Poltava region. Were you born in the Poltava region? Where were you born? Here. In America, in Dallas. Oh, fantastic. Uh, do you know where your parents in Ukraine were from? Kharkiv. From where? Kharkiv. Kharkiv, okay, Kharkiv, Eastern Ukraine. So, yeah. Imagine that, <laughs> imagine that you're in Kharkiv, in the village, uh, reaping the, the rye, or, or uh, the, the wheat, uh, and your brother decides to take off. He's sick of living in Russian-occupied uh, Kharkiv, so in 1930, he takes off to Poland, uh, or Polish-occupied Ukraine, let's say Lviv, right? Uh, he decides to get out with his life, but when he comes back after 33, after the genocide, uh, he says a very simple question to his, uh, a very simple thing to his sister. What would you say to your sister if you haven't seen her for 10 years? What are the first words which would come out of your mouth? Um, Children always get this. Uh, don't think too hard. How are you? Yes, Privit, Zdrastvui, in the Poltava region back then. So the sister uh, does the worst thing a sister could do. What do you think that might be? Uh, kicks him out of the house. That's one thing. Well, she does something even worse. She just ignores him. She doesn't have the strength to kick him out the door. She has, 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 can't even recognize that he's her brother. And the brother says, you know, why are you ignoring me? Right? What a terrible thing. Uh, he becomes so proud. And she says, no, quite the opposite. I've become humbled. Through my tears, I didn't recognize you. You got out to the west, I stayed with the Muscovites. There's nothing to put in the, in the, uh, the masonry heater, the peaches we call it. Uh, it's hard working for the Russian man. R working for the man is hard in itself, uh, but for the Russian man, uh, you're lucky to get out with your life, as she did. Uh, and the children say, Mommy, we're hungry. Give us some food, and there's nothing to eat. So there's a reason why in 1933, the sister now speaks Russian. Uh, there's a reason when Stalin says jump, she asks how high. <laughs> because she wants to live. This is one of the keys, the philosophy, uh, to ending this thing. It's called getting our act together, Ukraine, east and west. Uh, enough of this saying the Russian speakers can go to Putin. There's a reason they speak Russian. Uh, and they need some time to learn Ukrainian. You're from Kharkiv, right? Me too. Okay. You speak fantastic Ukrainian, but not everybody does. It's going to take time. Uh, uh, but for Europe, when Europe says, Ukraine, you're not a free nation, you're communist, and you're corrupt. And we don't want corrupt communists in our European Union. Did they fail to recognize the truly free part of Europe when Europe was in its feudalist phase? Before the Magna Carta was drafted in England, right? Uh, the free part of Europe, which we call the Hetmanshina, the Kozak uh, country. Yes, they've forgotten. Let's hope that we can remind them of that today. Uh, the idea is to recognize our brethren. And with America, 
When America says Russia or Ukraine, you're from Russia. It's not gonna happen anymore, folks. And thank you Americans for finally realizing how different we are. We've had freedom in the past. It was 300 years ago, but it's still in our genes. We didn't even know that we could take them more than three days. I gave them eight hours till they got to my village uh, when the, after the day of the bombs. Uh, and I was very happy that they have not taken Kiev, nor will they ever take Kiev. Uh, and it's time for Ukraine to recognize what America is about. To give so much money, that's one thing. To give so many Patriot missiles and HIMARS systems uh, in Abrahams. Uh, but the most important thing, they're also freedom lovers. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen, folks. And there's a lot of freedom left in America, and especially Texas. <laughs> I like Texas. Uh, I, I recognize that today. But there's something between the cowboy and the Cossack. So, again, I'm going to try to play music too. Uh, that's the gist of the song. Uh, to get our act together to where Putin can never take any part of the free world uh, and turn it into a dictatorship as terrible as the Moscow Empire has been in Ukraine for 200 years. So this is from the traditional Kobzar repertoire. There's no speculation here. Uh, and we're lucky to have these songs from the last person who knew that repertoire, Yuri Tkachenko. Oh, 
grief is our reconciling, our rest that Oh, 
bodrskujet, on šiz nu hraniti, aš še i vrago kojim ne zrit pred sobojo, pobačeno ružije o to tobojo. Hvala.